Okay, welcome to lecture 17. This is the energy equation part two, and we're gonna work example problems. So I have three example problems. Hopefully each one will kind of illustrate something for you. Um, some of these things are setting up things down the line, um, but you know, hopefully these will, these will work for you. So um, the objective today of this lecture is to apply the energy equation in combination with continuity, hydrostatics, momentum, et cetera, um, you know, all of our tools uh, to solve problems. And so what I've done here is I, I typed out the energy equation, mostly so that I wouldn't have to retype it again and again, but also so that it would be clear and legible. And the last thing we just want to remember with this, um, I didn't really stress this when we, um, I didn't exactly derive it, but I, I just kind of explained where it was coming from in the last one, is that this is for steady, steady, incompressible flows. Okay. Um, so um, you will never get a problem. I, I guess it's possible we could have an unsteady, but you know this is not really going to come up that much in this class. Where you, you know usually if something's obvious for the energy equation, we're going to we're going to need to use it. So anyway, so we're going to zoom in here, and I'm going to work this problem here. Um, an, inc an incompressible, oh, of course, I have a I have a typo. Um, an incompressible flow. An incompressible. Well, come on, let me type in there. Fluid flows steadily along the pipe below. Okay. Um, determine the direction of flow and the head loss over the six meter pipe. Okay, so um, we are going to use this equation. So I'm going to I'm going to steal it from up here, um, if it will let me. Okay, so I'm going to steal it. Uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful than that. Okay, I'm going to steal it and put it right there. I'm going to resize it because um, it's a little big for my taste. Okay, and we'll never, we'll never fit anything on here if we don't if we don't resize it. Okay, so what I want you to what I want to remember here is that you know we're working with the energy equation, but I think we want to we want to remember that we have tools. Okay, we are not stuck with only the energy equation. Why does it do that? Tools. Okay, so if we remember their continuity and two, geometry, and three is the one I can never remember, and four is Bernoulli, okay, slash energy, okay, and we'll probably never use Bernoulli again, which is kind of crazy, so we can almost like draw a line through that. Five is the momentum. Momentum, okay, and these, these, these are the tools that we're gonna use on everything in this class. Uh, this one, of course, the one I can never remember is hydrostatics, okay, which is usually a manometer, but um, we'll see in this case, if we don't have manometers, we've just got piezometers. Um, so that's these pipes here. So, um, so we'll kind of come back to that as we, uh, as we work through this and we kind of figure out what we're working on, but um, you know, or what we need. Okay, so we have an incompressible fluid and it's flowing steadily along the um, the pipe, and so we want to know the direction of flow. Now, there's two obvious, th th this answer, um, once you've done fluids for a little while, is obvious which direction this is flowing. Uh, it may not be so obvious to you um, yet, but there's, there's actually two reasons. There's one reason, there's one quote-unquote obvious reason why it should go in each direction. So the obvious reason why we would expect it to go this way is because of gravity, okay, gravity, okay. And the obvious reason we would expect it to go in the opposite direction, um, let's, use, uh, let's use red, is because of pressure, okay? And you should have noticed that this number is bigger than this number, indicating that the pressure down here is higher than the pressure over here, okay? So that's, that's kind of the, the quote-unquote, you know, obvious, okay? So really what's happening is these two forces are working against each other. And the problem is, um, you know, just by staring at it, you don't really have a good frame of reference to figure out which one of these two is stronger. Fortunately, we do have this energy equation. And the energy equation has a direction to it, okay? And the direction is tied up in those little numbers right there, the ones and the twos, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we are going to work through this um, example and we are going to assume that the flow is going from one 
to 2. Okay, so here's our 2, here's our 1. Maybe white is not the best color. Um, anyway, so if we assume that, uh, we also note one thing. We don't know what fluid this is, so that's problematic. Because as you can, uh, as you recognize, as we think in terms of pressure, is that pressure has this little gamma down here, okay? So we're just going to do the best we can, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so we're going to take these terms one at a time. So I'm, I'm just going to do the types of terms one at a time. And, and you'll see in a second why this is quote-unquote obvious to me which way this is going to flow. And hopefully... Um, Hopefully, you know, uh, it's actually kind of graphed for you at the moment, but we'll do it in a second. Okay, so what's the pressure at one? So we want to know the pressure right here. Okay, well, you know, this is not a static fluid in the pipe, okay? But it is a static fluid in the piezometer. So we can use hydrostatics, okay? So that's this tool right here, okay, to drive at the pressure. And we could say, well, the pressure at one is gamma of the fluid, okay? times that height, which is going to be 1.0 meters, okay, or the depth of water at that point. Okay, and then we divide that by gamma. Oh, look at that. That's nice. It just kind of worked out for us, right? It just, you know, we're not, not going to need the gamma because it's going to cancel out. Okay, that's cool. Um, now, what about this Z, okay? This Z, which is the gravity term, or, or which is where gravity comes in. Okay, well, okay. Okay, so yeah, so we're going to express the gravity term here. The, the Z at 1 is 1 and a half, okay? And that's assuming that this is our datum, okay? So that's where Z is 0, okay? So that means C2 is going to be 0, okay? So now we're going to keep moving on, and now we've got these, this velocity term. And um, oftentimes we have to deal with the velocity term. Um, in this case... We're going to note something um, a little bit uh, special about the velocity term, which is that the velocity at 1 and the velocity at 2 are the same. Okay? And we know this because the pipe has the same diameter. Okay? So by continuity, oh, look, there's our continuity. Okay? Then that this term and this term are the same on both sides of this um, Expression. So no matter what they are, they're the same. Okay. So we can subtract it from both sides, and it goes away. Okay. Now, um, so the nice thing about that is that also means we can get rid of the alpha, which apparently I didn't even put in there, which is a major typo. So remember, there's an alpha in there. It looks like we're going to have to uh, insert that in all of these. Um, that's okay. It'll just remind us that it that it's there. Okay. So I'm going to put plus zero, and then um, we have this HP. So remember, that's the head of a pump. Now remember, there is no pump, okay? So I'm just going to put an X through the pump. And while we're here, I'm going to put an X through the turbine because there's no pump or turbine in this control volume. Remembering that the control volume is here. When we defined 1 and 2, we uh, implicitly defined our control volume. So our control volume is right here, okay? Because that's our in and our out. Okay, so now we'll um, go equals, okay? Uh, there is no pump, so I'm not even going to bother writing plus 0. And now the nice thing is we get to P2. If we look, if we at, look, the look at the pattern for P1, P1 we, we already know what it's going to be. It's going to end, end up being, up being three meters. But we can, but go, we can go ahead and just write gamma, gamma times, times three meters. meters. Okay. Okay. okay, so you can see that the gammas will cancel. So now we have to look at um, the Zs. And so noting that you know, Z2 is our datum, so, um, so it's just a zero. And, and then we have to look at the velocities. And notice again, they're the same. Okay, I write them as plus zeros. They're not really zeros. It's just that they're the same on the right and the left. So there's an equal sign there. So they'll cancel out whatever they are. So um, it's not even, doesn't really even matter what they are. Uh, that's gonna kind of be a theme for the day. And then of course, we're just gonna copy down the head loss, um, which is of course uh, what we're looking for here. Uh, noting that the head loss is on the side um, in this case, on the right-hand side, because we're assuming that the flow is going from 1 to 2. Okay, so um, something should be kind of, um, well, I, I think um, if we're staring at this correctly, we'll start to see that something's going on here. So if we just look at these, at, um, excuse me, where, the, where these numbers are, are coming from, we're going to see that on the right-hand side, 
we're going to end up with one meter plus one and a half meters. And the left hand side, we're going to get three meters plus a head loss. Okay, so the head loss ends up being negative. Okay, so that is a problematic. It's impossible, okay, because that implies that we are losing a negative amount of energy. So if we're losing a negative amount of energy, that means we're gaining energy. Okay, so this head loss, which is on the right hand side of the equation, is kind of treated as a, well, it's treated as a loss or something that's leaving the system, okay, just like all the other terms on the right hand side. Okay, so if you end up getting a negative number, that means it's impossible. So that means the flow is either, either you made a mistake or the flow is in the other direction. Okay, so we can go ahead and change it and say that the flow is actually from two to one and the head loss from two to one is just the opposite sign. Okay, so we just flip the sign, it's actually going the other way. Now, I mentioned to you earlier that I could tell right off the, off the bat that this was gonna go, which direction this was gonna go. And I showed you to you by saying in red, I said, okay, well, there's the pressure. And then in blue, I said, well, there's the gravity. Um, and I said that just by looking at this, I could tell which direction this was going to flow in. And the problem, of course, is it seems kind of difficult to figure out, well, which, which one of these, you know, which one is more powerful, pressure or gravity? Um, and, you know, you could, you could think about like doing a free body diagram of the fluid or thinking along those lines, but there's other ways to kind of get at this. And um, give me a second. Okay, so there's other ways to get at this. And the easiest way is to think about this kind of like, well, you know, all these terms in this equation um, are types of energy. And the fluid flows in direction of highest head to lowest head or highest energy to lowest energy. And this equation gives you a good way to compare those two. And we just did it mathematically, but it was also done for you graphically before we even started the problem. And that was why I could look at this and just tell right off the bat. So for example, if we look at the amount of gravitational energy between these two points, okay, I'll do that in green. Okay, we notice that Z1 is shown graphically. Okay, pressure one, or the pressure head, P on gamma, is shown graphically. Okay, I could go back over to the, the second spot and notice that Z2 doesn't have a height and P on gamma is shown graphically. Notice that we don't have V2 on 2G, but whatever it is, it's the same on both sides. So we can see right there just by looking at it that P1 on gamma plus Z on the left, or plus V squared on 2G, is going to be lower than P on gamma on the right. Okay, and we could just see it graphically because look at where the top of that line is. You know, it's higher than the one on the, the one on the right is higher than the one on the left. So it's going to flow to the left. Okay, because that line accounts for two of our three terms. It doesn't count for velocity, but that's okay. Okay, it does not account for that, but that's okay because that's on both. That's the same on both. Okay, so that's how we could tell. And pretty soon we're going to do that as a standard thing. Okay, so let's go over to this next problem. Okay, and um, here's the equation again, typo and all. <laughs> um, all right, so the siphon below, uh, shown below, oh, there you go, I'm going to move it. Um, the siphon shown below discharges 2.80 CFS when D is 8 inches, L1 is 3 feet, and L2 is 3 feet. Okay, determine the head loss between the reservoir surface and point C, that's A, and B, the pressure at B, if three quarters of the head loss occurs between the reservoir surface and B. Assume turbulent flow. Okay, so that's nice. So that little alpha that I, didn't, that I forgot to put in there, um, it's not going to be a problem because if we're going to assume that it's turbulent, then we're going to assume that alpha is 1. So if we take 1 and we multiply it by something, it's just like, you know, it didn't exist. Okay. So let's remind ourselves what these tools are, okay? Because we don't ever want to forget what they are. We know this is going to be an energy equation because that's where we are. But here are the others, okay? Continuity, geometry, uh, hydrostatics, um, energy. Uh, we're not going to bother writing Bernoulli this time because that energy is just the one we're going to use. Think of energy as the, uh, or think of Bernoulli as the inviscid, no pumps or turbines version of... Um, um, energy, and the momentum, which we'll just we'll write as mom for now. Okay. 
And, you know, we may not need all of these, but it's just good to remember that we have them. Okay, so we're looking for head loss for A. So that tells us right off the bat that we're going to want the energy equation. The energy equation is the only equation that has head loss in it. So um, let's see. Um, I'm recording this after the fact because I accidentally my, my palm hit the, the record button. So it may seem a little disjointed. Um, I apologize for that. I, I have to figure out a way around that. Um, but anyway, we know we're going to be looking for head loss. And we want it between the surface and C. So our points are chosen A and C for us for part A. Okay, now note that means our control volume is going to start at A, and it's going to be all the fluid all the way to C. Okay, the fluid comes into this control volume at A, and it leaves it at C. Okay, so this equation, even though it's written from 1 to 2, it's actually going to be from A to C. And of course, I wrote B because I'm an idiot. But in a second, I'm going to erase that and put a C there. Okay, so just, you know, bear with me. So that should be a C. Okay, and we'll, we'll just kind of like walk through this and uh, take care of this term by term. Oh, okay. So notice uh, the pressure at A, okay, Notice that the pressure at A is on the surface, so it's atmospheric. It is in the atmosphere. Um, the pressure at B, uh, C, excuse me, the pressure at C is also atmospheric because C is open to the atmosphere. That is where the water ejects and kind of goes out into the atmosphere. So that means both of those terms go away, okay, because we're going to use gauge pressure and we're going to assume that that's zero, um, which is nice because it makes things easier. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Zs. Okay, for Z, uh, we have to pick a datum. Okay, now I usually prefer to kind of pick another color when I have another color. So we'll probably switch and make that green. Um, yeah, so let's switch and make that green just so it can kind of all line up for us. So the datum is in green. And we notice that I put that at the bottom of the problem so that I only have to deal with um, positive numbers. You can obviously put this wherever it makes sense to you, um, but that's where I like to put it. Okay, so the Z, uh, Z at C is zero, and the Z at one is L2, which is three feet. Okay, so now we're gonna deal with these velocity terms, and I want you to remind you here that the velocity of the tank Okay, it's a very big tank and it's a small hose, so I like to think of this as the Lake Tahoe thing, is that by, the, by virtue of continuity and the fact that the area of the tank is really, really large compared to the area of the hose, okay, so it's, it's all about the ratio. So because the area of the tank is really, really large, the velocity at A is going to be very small compared to the velocity at C. Okay, and so because of that, we typically will go in here and we will make uh, the velocity of the tank, so... Uh, of any kind of tank or reservoir or anything, we will make it zero. Okay, I call it the tank or the reservoir or, you know, I should just call it the Tahoe um, assumption. So if it's a, it's a big reservoir, the velocity of the surface is zero. Okay, that's not going to be the case for where it's leaving at C. So we have to think about how do we get at that, okay, because that's a little bit more difficult. And so we're going to have to use continuity to get at that, okay, and I think that that makes perfect sense. Um, so we're going to go over to our tools. There's continuity. Always use continuity to get velocities. Okay, so we're going to, at this point, this should be coming, becoming old hat. So Q on A2. So Q is given as 2.80 CFS. And the um, area is pi times the diameter, which is 8 inches on 12 squared. Okay, so V2 is, I think it's uh, 8.0214. Right, feet per second. Okay, so we box that off, so we've got it. So we can plug that in um, when we come back to our problem. Um, I'm just going to write plug here so that we can remember that that's what we're going to do when we come back. Okay, now the pumps, the turbines, we don't have a pump. We don't have a turbine, but we do have head loss, um, and that's kind of what we're solving for. So, but we are kind of, you know, getting where we're going. So let's delete the pump. Let's delete the, the, the pump and the turbine because they're just not going to follow with us.
Um, all right, so the next step at this point is we're just going to rewrite this, okay? So we, we end up, we only have one term on the left, and on the right, we've got two terms, okay? We've got the velocity head. Um, that's supposed to be feet per second. It looks pretty ugly. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the, you know, the two times gravity on the bottom, and then the head loss, okay? And so if we, um, if we solve for this, um, we notice that the head loss in this case, thankfully, is positive. Um, and keeping uh, five significant digits at 2.0009, which is super annoying, but you just got the wrong, the wrong uh, teacher. So if we, we're going to report it for our answer as 2.00 feet. Okay, so there you go. Now, we got, now we've got our answer. Okay, so that's A. So we can you know, check that off and move it down. Notice we've got a positive answer. You're always going to get a positive head loss unless you have screwed up assume the wrong direction or made a calculation error. Okay, so let's start on B. Okay, notice we're gonna, we wanna use this equation again. Um, and we could actually do the equation from A to B, or we could do it from B to C. Okay, we could do it either way. Um, in this particular example, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go from A to B. Okay, you could go from B to C, that, that's up to you. So we're gonna copy the equation um, shortly. Okay, noting that if we go from A to B, okay, we have a different control volume, okay, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to rewrite it because I was unable to kind of copy it. And this is a moment uh, where that I'm very proud of because I actually got some neat handwriting. Okay, and you'll, you'll notice that this is the most beautiful thing I've written on this um, tablet. Okay, that's supposed to be a, v, a VB, okay, plus um, the turbine plus the head loss, okay? Noting, of course, that the pump and the turbine don't exist. Um, I still always write, like to write out the whole equation. Pretty soon you will have this memorized and you will hate me for it. Um, okay, so now we're going from A to B. We're going to keep the same datum, and there's a reason for that because it makes our life easy. And the reason for that is because, you know, okay, let's scratch out the pump and the turbine. But the reason for that is that the, this, this portion the, has already been solved for. The, the part that kind of looks like Bernoulli, we did this already earlier. There's no reason to redo it all. The whole, we, could, we could look at the individual terms and we could figure out what they are, but we already know from above that the whole left-hand side is three feet, okay? If we look just up like three steps, you see that all of that was three feet. So there's no real reason to do all that work again. Okay, noting we could have done this equals, we could have gone to C as well, and, and, you know, we would have already known, well, yeah, we would have known. Okay, so now we're going to do the right-hand side. So PB on gamma, well, we don't know what that is. That's what we're looking for. And ZB, okay, we note that that's all the way up to the top, so that's L1 plus L2. Okay, so that's going to be 6 feet. Oh, yeah, noting that this is water. Okay, so the, the gamma on the bottom is gamma water. Um, and then ZB is going to be L2 plus L1, so that's going to be um, 6 feet. And then the velocity at, at B, we note that the velocity at B is the same as the velocity at C, and we've actually already solved for that quantity. Okay, We have already done this. So there's no need to do it again. Okay, so we're just gonna plug that value directly down here. Now notice that they're the same because they're the same pipe. It's got the same uh, cross-sectional area, so the velocity won't change. Okay, so if we, if we do that on my calculator, um, we end up with a number, um, I think I write it down wrong here the first time, but it should be 0 0.99911. Okay, now most of you guys We'll just write that as one because you don't want to go to five significant digits, but I recommend it. I recommend having a, a process here um, you know, that you follow, and that's why I have rules, so that you'll always get the same answer. Okay, so um, plug into my calculator, yeah, 0 0.99911 feet. Okay, and now we're going to add the head loss. Now, this is the head loss 
from A to B. It is not the head loss in the whole system. It's just in the control volume. So we know that it's three-fourths of what was there before, okay, or what was there from A to C. Three-fourths of it is happening from A to B. And of course, you might wonder why three-fourths of it would happen there. Why wouldn't it be, like, it seems like it's a shorter length of pipe. Um, and it is, but it's also got the bend, the entrance, and the entrance will often have a lot of, a lot of loss. Okay, so there's our equation. So I'm gonna put in one more line here um, just to accentuate something. I want these all as uh, numbers. Okay, so we're just gonna write it all out. I'll write it all out in blue. Um, although this is actually a good time to not write it all out in blue, but. All right, so if we put all the, if we put all the math in there, okay, notice, okay, and I think this is really, really important, Okay, the pressure term going from A to B, okay, well, we don't know about the pressure term, but the, the Z terms, okay, so the three feet is Z1, Z A, and six feet is Z B. Notice that the, velo the elevation increased from A to B. Okay, let's do the same thing for the velocity. Okay, the velocity head went from zero at A to point, well, the head went to, from zero to point nine 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 one one feet, B. Okay, so those the velocity had increased, and we had a, and we lost energy. So, in addition to going from A to B, we we went up the energy. Like we we added, you know, we needed to add energy to get it there, and um, and we lost energy on the way. So what this means mathematically is that the pressure at B ends up being negative. So the pressure had to go down for all these other things to go up. Okay. And so what I want here, and I'm emphasizing this, is I don't want you to be scared. It gives us an extra no, a, a negative number, okay? And it doesn't mean anything. Well, it does mean things, but it's not, shouldn't be too scary. Okay, just plug it in and solve, okay? And it makes sense that it would be negative, because if we look up here, look at A. The pressure at A is zero, okay? And we moved upwards in the fluid, Okay, remember from hydrostatics, if you move upwards in a fluid, I'm gonna erase this because it's getting a little messy. But remember, if you move upwards in a fluid, in a static fluid, okay, um, and also even a non-static fluid, but generally moving upwards in a fluid causes pressure to decrease. Okay, so if we start at the surface here and we start it at zero, okay, and we go upwards in the fluid, okay, now remember that's gauge, so it can go negative. Okay, so we went upwards, and if you go upwards, okay, then the pressure is going to go down. And if we started at zero, it's going to have to go negative. Okay? Now you say, okay, but it's a moving fluid, so we can't really use that. Okay? Well, it's, it's zero at the first case, but it's moving in the, in the second case. So also, when the velocity increases, the pressure goes down. So that's another reason why the pressure should decrease. Okay, now notice, you know, both of these you could find in Bernoulli, okay? Um, but the, you know, these relationships, but also the one on the right is also in hydrostatics, okay? But it's just something, you know, stop and think about it, okay? That point had to have been the lowest pressure in the system. And so we got a negative pressure, and I want to think about that negative pressure because a scary thing about negative pressures is we start to say to ourselves, is this going to cavitate, okay? Because we're, we've now got a negative pressure, okay? Um, so let's, let's kind of back this up and think about what this negative pressure means, because this is a negative pressure gauge. I put the G on there to emphasize this is a gauge pressure. Absolute pressures can never go negative. Gauge pressures can. Okay, and I know it's gauge because I started this problem and I used zero for atmosphere. As soon as I use zero for atmosphere, I set the whole problem up that way. So I'm going to um, talk about kind of what this means. Okay, so let's convert this to an absolute. So to do that, we need to think about what is the atmospheric pressure in absolute. So in absolute, it's 14.7 PSI. Okay, I don't want to deal with PSI. Um, well, really 14.7 PSI A. Um, so we're going to convert that to PSF A. So that's 2116.8 PSF A. Okay, so if we add that to the gauge, we will get what the pressure at B is in absolute. So if we add these together, um, 
we will get. So basically what, what this gauge pressure tells me is that I am 343.19 uh, pounds per square foot below atmospheric pressure. So if we compute that, then here's PB in absolute. Notice it can never go negative, okay? But it is below atmospheric. Atmospheric would have been 2116. Okay, so, so this one, okay, this at, you know, just to bring it home, the atmospheric pressure can never be negative the, the gauge pressure can be. Okay, so let's address this question of whether or not it can cavitate. Okay, and um, so the other thing to note before I do the cavitation is that at that low pressure point, it is below atmospheric pressure and there's atmospheric pressure on the outside, so it might want to collapse your pipe. So your pipe at that point needs to be strong enough. But let's look at cavitation. Okay, so in the back of your book, in Appendix A5 or whatever it is, um, if you go back into the tables, you can find out that for water, um, let's say at um, uh, 50, 50 degrees F, oh, not C, F. Um, okay, so water is going to cavitate at a pressure of, so the equilibrium vapor pressure is 0 0.178 PSI. Okay, now notice that's a PSI A. Okay, so you can't really compare that to your gauge pressure. You have to compare it to your absolute. So we're gonna convert that into a PSF just so that I can compare it. Okay, so we'll multiply by 144 and we'll get 25.623. Now, obviously the, the decimals don't really matter here, but you can see that you know, the, the pressure of B is much, much greater than the absolute pressure, uh, excuse me, than the vapor pressure, so therefore it will not cavitate, okay? And this will come up on, on homework problems, and you'll say, I don't remember how to do that. Well, not, luckily, we now have a video, so you can always come back and find it. Um, and so this will not cavitate. Now, just for fun, I stared at that chart uh, and kind of did some interpolation to figure out what temperature would be required for this to cavitate. And I found that the temperature for it to cavitate is approximately 203 degrees F. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. You know, so, you know, not room temperature, but also not 212. Okay, so by lowering the pressure, we were able to lower um, when this would boil. Okay, so here's all the mess we've made. Let's go over to the right. And let's do problem last. It will be on this one for the next half hour, uh, less than half hour, 25 minutes. Where are my notes? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move uh, my equation down so that we have it. And luckily, it's about the right size. We don't have to resize it. Okay, so water flows steadily down the inclined pipe shown below. Determine A, the difference in pressure, P2 to P1. Uh, B, the loss between sections 1 and 2, and C, the net axial force exerted by the pipe wall on the flowing water. Okay, so we're looking for friction here, okay? And um, I think um, we want to talk P2 and P1. These have already been uh, dis uh, defined for us because they have section 1 and section 2. Um, but we want to remember that, you know, with a difference in pressure, um, P2 minus P1, as long as you keep, keep your sign consistent. Like if you've got P1 minus P2 and you just have the opposite sign of mine, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to write down the tools. Um, remembering that continuity is always used for velocities. Geometry is always used for elevations and any other thing that might matter. Uh, the hydrostatics is used for pressures. Energy can basically be used for anything. Um, but most specifically, pumps, turbines, and head losses can only be gotten out of energy. And the momentum we will use any time there's a force, forces on a moving fluid. Okay, unfortunately with momentum, that means free body diagrams. So let's, um, let's start by looking at the first bit. And it says, determine the difference in pressure P2 to P1. Okay, P2 minus P1. So... A temptation here, um, especially because this is the energy problems, is to immediately want to jump into the energy equation. And so um, 
I mean, it's highly likely we're going to need it here somewhere. But let's look at the energy equation and let's think about kind of what the terms are there and when we're going to and whether or not we can use this to solve P2 minus P1. So, oh yeah, so here's our control volume. Okay, which has basically been defined for us anyway, because they told us one and two. So here's one, and then two is on the down the downstream. Okay, so um, so with this control volume now defined for us, and points one and two basically you know were chosen for us, we don't really have a whole lot of choice. Um, we want to note that um, a choice of equation comes in here, and one of the things we want to do is we want to use energy, right? Because this is the energy lecture. And um, energy has pressure terms in it. It's got P2 and it's got P1 in it. So the temptation is to want to jump right into that. Um, and it's not really a bad um, temptation. However, I note that we can't solve for P1 and P2 because we don't know anything about the head loss. Okay, so these two will go together and be one unknown, but this is a second unknown. Okay, we can probably get at the Zs. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, the velocities note are going to be the same in section one and section two because the constant area pipe and there's no pump and there's no turbine however there's this unknown over here so that makes this equation uh, not useful for us in that regard okay so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of that and we're going to go back and I want to think about um, the um, I want to think about instead about the fact that we can use hydrostatics in this problem. And the reason we can do use hydrostatics is because the fluid is not flowing in the manometer. Okay, so we can, so we can use hydrostatics here, and that is definitely the, the way to go. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit different than you will, probably. Um, and it would look a little bit weird to you. Um, but I think, if you just bear with me, it will make sense, I hope. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to just create some variable names because um, it's going to make my life easier. So this is going to be lowercase h. This will be capital H. And this right here is going to be z1 minus z2. And you're like, why don't you just call that something else? Well, you'll see, okay? And part of it has to do with this equation down here, noticing that it's already got z1 and z2. And I just know something about how these things work out, okay? So um, just bear with me. Okay, so we're going to do... Um, uh, the manometer equation here, and um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to create a manometer equation. So we're going to start with um, the pressure at one. Okay, now I'm going to go down plus gamma water. Okay, and I'm going down Z1 minus Z2. Okay, now I'm going to go down H, capital H, plus lowercase h. Okay, so that's going to get me all the way down to here. Okay, now I'm going to go back up, minus gamma Hg, okay, um, times capital H. Okay, now I'm going to go back up another minus gamma water times capital H. Okay, equals P2. Okay, now again, remember at the beginning of the class, I said we're going to end up using... Um, Use it, doing manometers a lot, okay? So I hope that this is becoming second nature for you. Okay, so I'm gonna take P1, I'm gonna bring it over to the other side. I'm also gonna hope that you notice that um, this gamma water capital H right here is gonna cancel with this gamma water capital H here. Okay, so th that's gonna go away. And I'm gonna do something, and this is the part that I think you may not like, um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, P2 minus P1 on this side equals, okay, so I've got um, Z1 minus Z2 plus H minus gamma HG H, okay, and I'm going to divide both sides by the gamma of water. Okay, now you're sitting there going, well, you know, why did you, why did you do that? Um, one of the things is I wanted to emphasize, because a lot of you in your homework assignment basically said, um, which I haven't finished grading, but I'm working on, but had this, but didn't have this when you did your uh, manometer. So remember to do the full manometer and um, to not forget, um, you know, to, to just do the whole thing, okay? Because it's, 
it, it matters, okay? So, um, you know, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer. Uh, so anyway, so I'm actually going to leave this as Z1 minus Z2, and you're not going to like that. Um, plus, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to factor out this H, and I'm going to get 1 minus um, S mercury, okay, equals P2 minus P1 over gamma. And, of course, gamma water. And if you're wondering where that came from, note that this right here is the definition of the specific weight, uh, the specific gravity of mercury, okay? So I just factored out an H, and that was what was left, left behind. Okay, so this is, so this is, um, so this is pretty useful. Um, and so now I end up with an equation. And again, I'm going to leave it in a way, like, you won't like it but I'm gonna do it anyway, okay? Plus lowercase h is uh, five over 12 uh, feet. Uh, one minus 13.6 equals P2 minus P1 over gamma water. So P2 minus P1 over gamma water um, equals, um, Okay, so P2 minus P1 over gamma water equals um, Z1 minus Z2 plus, if we, you know, do our little calculator here, oh, well, that should be a minus. Let's just make it a minus 5.25 feet. Okay, there's a little thing. Okay, and so you're kind of wondering why, why I did it like this. Um, of course, it, you know, came out really ugly. Um, let me clean it up a little bit. Um, okay. Oh, that's interesting. No, you're doing it again. Why are you? Why are you doing this? Okay. Have you decided to to be nice, you jerk program? Okay. Minus. Good. Okay. All right. So I'm le I'm going to leave it like that. Um, However, you know, we can't leave it like that because it specifically wanted this. But um, that's going to be one form that I like it in. And you're looking at me like I'm crazy right now. Um, but you'll see why in a second. It has to do with what happens when you plug it in down here. And you'll see how it all works out. Okay, but in the meantime, um, we need to kind of get at some of these things. So I need to do Z1 minus Z2, which I note that if I look over here, there's a nice triangle here, Z1 minus Z2. Okay, we know it's five feet along the hypotenuse, and we know this angle. Okay, so that's a little geometry, okay? So I'm just gonna do that up here because that's uh, not super complicated, but Z1 minus Z2 then is gonna be equal five feet times the sine of uh, 24 degrees, okay? So that means that Z1 minus Z2 equals um, 2.0337 feet, okay? Keep five, report three, okay? So if we plug that in, I get P2 minus P1 over the gamma of water, which is 62.4 PCF equals uh, 2.0337 feet minus five and a quarter feet. Okay, so uh, P2 minus P1 equals uh, negative 3.2163. Okay, so that means that P1 is greater than P2. Okay, this means this is driving the fluid. The fluid is being pushed by pressure from uh, 1 to 2. Okay, so a negative pressure gradient usually means that it's being driven forward. Okay, um, all right, so that's cool. Okay, um, so that's part A. Okay, part B. The head loss, or the loss, they say, so that just means the head loss between sections one and two. Again, remember, this is our control volume. Okay, nothing else would do. Okay, now I'm making it very hard to read that, uh, whatever the diameter of that pipe is. So when we get there, we'll have to erase that. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's start looking at this. Um, let's not do that. But let's start looking at this um, equation down here, this this. Um, knowing that, that we're looking for the head loss. Okay, so I'll leave it so we can see the, the, the diagram. Okay, I'll notice that Z1 and Z2, we know the difference in them because we solve for it um, uh, up, up high. 
Uh, I'm not even going to worry about it because I have this and I know how this is going to work out for us. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these velocities. Okay. By virtue of the fact that this is the same diameter here as it is here. Okay. Same. So because it's the same diameter, it's going to be the same velocity. Okay. Because there's only one inlet and one outlet. So these terms are going to go away. I don't even care if it's turbulent or not. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the pumps and the turbines because there's none of those. And so all I've got is pressures, uh, elevations, and head loss. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange, or I'm going to write this as Z1 equals P2 minus P1 over gamma water. Notice it has to be, it has to be water because that's the water that's flowing in the pipe where we're doing the energy equation from 1 to 2 in our control volume. Okay, plus Z2 plus the head loss. And of course, the head loss is what we're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to take this expression right here, and I'm going to plug it in right there. Okay, noting C1 equals that uh, I'll, I'll do the part that I'm plugging in in uh, green. Okay, noting how nice this all works out. Okay, if I do my thing that I'm imagining you thought I was crazy. Okay, and maybe I am. Okay, because you could, you could plug numbers into if you wanted to. Um, but I noticed that this tends to work out nice and pretty. Okay, so notice that when we decide to get rid of terms, okay, Z1 gets rid of Z2, Z2 gets rid of Z2, and this 5.25 goes over to the other side. And we end up with head loss equals 5.25 feet. Okay, pretty cool, right? So notice the head loss is a positive uh, quantity, um, and we lost five feet of energy. Okay, I mean it's you know weird to think about energy in terms of feet, but really we lost five feet of head from one to two. Okay, and so that's how we saw this. And notice it was positive, and if it was negative, we would have made a mistake. Either we would have assumed the wrong flow direction or we would have made a mistake somewhere else. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up because we've got to do this last bit here, and I don't want to see all this nonsense. Okay, I want to see some of this nonsense, but not all of this nonsense. We'll leave the Z1 minus the Z2. Well, I'll just rewrite it in a second. It never hurts to kind of remember what we're thinking about here. Okay, especially, you know, since this is the first time that, you know, we're seeing this. Um... Okay, so um, I want to, whoa, I don't want to do that. Okay, I want to be there, okay. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to zoom way out, okay, and I'm going to grab this momentum equation here. And I'm going to zoom in. Now, how did I know that I was going to need the momentum equation? So of all of my tools, okay, I've now used, ge oh, son of a okay, I've now used, um, um, okay, I've used geometry. Okay, I've used this guy. I've used this guy. I used continuity when I assumed that, you know, Q in equals Q out, which in this case, because it's constant area, that means that V1 equals V2. Okay, so I've used that. And how did I know that I was going to need momentum here? Well, because it was looking for the axial force of moving water. Okay, so whenever that shows up, that means the momentum equation is going to make its mark. Now, what's annoying about the momentum equation for some of you is that um, the momentum equation requires a free body diagram. Um, and that's okay. Okay, um, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just annoying, right? Um, so I'm just going to do it up here. So it's kind of out of the way. Okay, so there's our fluid from section one to section two. Okay, so I'm drawing this. Okay, now we've got a pressure on the front of this fluid, P1, A1, um, you know, that's really silly. P1, P, there's no reason for you to do that. 1, A1. Okay, we've got pressure on this side. Okay, that's P2, A2. We've got shear on these walls. Okay, normally the shear force, right, normally we would get at the shear force by doing force of shear equals tau times area, which is mu du dr times the area, right? That's how we would normally do this. However, we don't have any way to get at that in this problem, 
okay? So we can't solve for it directly. Um, so we've got that force of shear, which I'll call, um, we'll just call it Fs maybe? Sure, why not? And then we've got a weight coming downwards, okay, a weight. Okay, noting that the weight is acting at an angle theta, which we know because it's the same as this angle here. Okay, and then we have a normal force uh, on the walls, which is gonna be acting probably in this direction, net. Okay, really there's a normal force on the walls all around this thing, kind of responding to the pressure. Um, but because of this weight, the normal force will be larger on the bottom of the, of the pipe than it is on the top of the pipe. So the net, it's going to be in this direction. Now, I'm not too concerned about that, though, and there's a reason for that, about those normal forces. It's because this problem asks for axial. Okay, and this equation has arrows. Okay, and those arrows tell us something about, we don't have to worry about, well, if our question is a net axial force, we don't care about things that are perpendicular to the axis. So we're not going to worry about those things. Okay, so um, I hope I never use red for a free body diagram again. That's a terrible color. Anyway, so, um, so we're going to do this in the axial direction. So I'm going to write this in the axial direction. Okay, and so I'm going to sum the forces in the axial direction. So this part right here, we're going to expand. Okay, and I've got P1A1 minus P2A2, noting that they have the same area. Um, I've got weight. Uh, sine of that angle, and I've got minus the friction force, okay, or the shear force, force of shear, okay. So that's this thing expanded. Okay, now I have to look at this guy, okay, and you might immediately be going, well, this is problematic, right, because m dot is kind of hard to get at, okay. We can, we can get the rho because it's water, but q but well, we don't know anything about velocities, and there's nothing in this thing to help us with velocities, okay? We can get the cross-sectional area, because we have that six inches of the diameter, but that, so that's problematic. So the Q is problematic because we don't know the velocity in the, um, I'll call this A, in the A direction, the axial direction. Maybe I'll call it Vax, V in the axial direction. Okay, so we can't get, we can't get either of these because we don't know velocities. However, what we can note is that rho, q, and v axial are the same in both of these locations. So I don't know what these terms are, but I know they cancel each other in this case, okay? Because it's a constant velocity pipe and nothing accelerates or anything weird happens, okay? So these go away, which is pretty nice. And this term right here, well, that's the unsteadiness term. That's d by dt, okay? This is steady, okay, as noted right there. So this equals zero, okay? And this kind of makes sense, right? You know, there's, there's no acceleration of this fluid moving through this, so the sum of forces should be zero. So the sum of forces is zero, okay? So we can go ahead and solve this um, by bringing the Fs all by itself, and I'll get, and I'll get um, P1 minus P2 times the area. Now, I'm just going to use one area because they have the same cross-sectional area. Plus W, oh, well, not, not, let's not do W. Okay, this is fluid, so this is how we get at weight. Gamma times the volume, okay, times the sine of theta. Okay, so if we um, give ourselves a little bit of space here, um, the force of shear, P1 minus P2. So P2 minus P1 was a negative 200.7, 200 so this will be a positive. 200.70 PSF, okay, times that cross-sectional area, which is going to be pi. In this case, the diameter of that pipe is 6 inches, so half a foot squared over 4, okay, plus um, gamma, which is uh, 62.4 PCF, times the volume. Now, remember, the volume of a cylinder is going to be the base Okay, times the height, which is given to us right here, 5 feet, okay, times the sine of 24. Okay, so um, Fs equals um, 39.407 pounds plus 24.917 pounds. Okay, so Fs 
equals 64.324 pounds, and we're only going to report 3, so FS equals 64.3 pounds. Okay, so I usually like this step. I know that you guys will probably not do it, but it's good to think about orders of magnitude here. And note that in this case, the weight on the fluid is the same order of magnitude as the pressure uh, differences as far as what's driving the flow. Okay, um, one thing that I will note is that with the pressures, we could have known right from the bat, right off the bat, kind of where the pressure was likely to be the highest. And uh, one of the ways to derive at that was, you know, um, look at how this drove the mercury down, okay, relative to here, okay, the mercury got driven up over here, okay. And so that usually will tell us the pressure is higher here, okay, that, you know, in, in an equilibrium where the pressures were roughly the same, you know, you'd expect this thing to be flat, but it got driven up, okay, so um, that's just something to remember. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the lecture. We're at 55 minutes, and um, that's all I got for you today. Um, just remember that, you know, this stuff is important, but your mental and physical health is more important. Remember that I'm here for you. Give me a call if you need me. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's less important or whatever, office hours, if you can't make office hours, send me an email, send me a text. Uh, we can meet over Zoom. It's fine. So hope you all having a good day and that all is going well in your lives and your families are good and all that stuff. So um, take it easy and uh, have a good one.